Hello people, in this video let us look at deviated nasal septum, deviated nasal septum or DNS. So you can see here, this is the nasal septum which is normal, right? And uh, here you can see the deviated nasal septum. Look at this nasal septum, the shape, it simply goes like this, like this, like this, like this, yeah, that's a deviated nasal septum. So this is an important cause of nasal obstruction. The deviated nasal septum is what? An important cause of nasal obstruction. You can see it can cause unilateral nasal obstruction where see here they have written here unilateral nasal obstruction also it can cause bilateral nasal obstruction also it can cause. So it can cause both obstructions unilateral and bilateral. Okay. So now let us go to the causes. Why does the nasal septum get deviated? So main thing you remember trauma then developmental error these two standard things you have to write either they are born with it or somebody punched them so they got a deviated nasal septum so the developmental error they are born with the deviated septum or trauma okay these two are the main things okay what are the other two things you will write uh, racial factors caucasians you have to write they are more affected hereditary factors it may run in the family okay a deviated nasal septum so that's it only four things they have mentioned in the textbook so trauma developmental what else uh, racial caucasian and hereditary factors Yes, uh, are you able to understand the causes? Causes of what are we looking at? Deviated nasal septum. We saw trauma, developmental, racial, some Caucasians and uh, hereditary. Okay. Now let us look at trauma a little in detail. Here we go. Trauma. A lateral blow to the nose may cause displacement of the septal cartilage from the vom vomerine groove and maxillary crest. So first let us see where the septal uh, septum. See this is the septum. Right. Nasal septum. Here you have the bony part, here you have the cartilaginous part and looks like here you have the membranous part, right? So membranous part has no bone, no cartilage. Cartilage will have cartilage, here you have septal cartilage. What and all have they marked here? There is some vomeronasal cartilage, here they have marked that. Then here they have put some other things. Bone, what and all is there? Perpendicular palate of ethmoid. Then this is also bony, right? Vomer, vomer bone. Here they have marked other things. Rostrum of sphenoid, crest of palatine bone, etc. So lateral blow will do what? It will displace the septal cartilage from the vomerine groove and maxillary crest. So the cartilage is affected looks like in the lateral blow. In blow from front, the crushing blow from front, what can happen? See, if somebody blows, uh, punches from front, there is septal cartilage. Again, here they are causing buckling, twisting, fracture, duplication of nasal septum with telescoping of its fragments. So, here they are talking about fractures, etc. So, anyways, we have seen nasal septum fractures. You remember, guys, Jarjave fracture, Chevalet fracture, all this can happen. Apart from that, even uh, deviated nasal septum can happen. Yes, did you understand? From uh, So, there can be buckling, twisting, fractures can happen, duplication of nasal septum with telescoping of fragments, all this can happen with just understanding trauma. Injuries to the nose commonly occur in childhood but are often overlooked. Even the history may not be forthcoming. So injuries to, in childhood may, might have happened, you know, sometimes you may have ignored it. Trauma may also be inflicted at birth during difficult labor. So even by, during difficult labor, there could be a trauma inflicted on the nose. When the nose is pressed during its passage through the birth canal. Birth injuries should be immediately attended as they result in septal deviation later in life. Oh, that's interesting. So did you get it guys? So what and all did they say in trauma? In trauma you have to elaborate, okay? So if it is from the lateral side, they said some septal cartilage can be affected. If it from the front, they said there can be twisting, fractures, etc, etc. Then they spoke about how a person may have got injured, you know, in childhood and might have even forgotten the history of it. Then um, also there could be, what did they say? When a baby is being delivered in the birth canal, it can have a it can have a what trauma so which would have caused the deviated nasal septum and uh, in this case the birth injury should be immediately attended then there can, otherwise there can be septal deviation in life but what happens if there is septal deviation what did they say that it causes nasal obstruction unilateral bilateral okay now let's move on to the next one guys developmental error so basically they are telling how the nasal septum gets formed okay so it uh, it is formed by tectoseptal process which descends to meet the two halves of the developing palate. So two halves of the developing palate meets the nasal septum 
which is descending the tectoseptal process which descends to meet the two halves of the developing palate in the midline during the primary and secondary dentition that is when teeth are coming further development takes place in the palate so the palate will further descend when the teeth are teeth dentition is happening and it widens the palate widens to accommodate the teeth unequal growth between the palate and the base of the skull may cause buckling of the nasal septum so if there is unequal growth or between the palate and the base of the skull this can cause buckling of the nasal septum okay so did you understand this developmental error guys with respect to this palate and all that so this nasal septum will descend meet these two uh, pro, uh, parts of the palate in the midline then palate has to descend uh, descend during teeth development but if there is unequal growth between the palate and the base of the skull then that can cause buckling of the nasal septum further they are saying in adenoid hypertrophy what happens that is mouth breathers you remember the adenoid feces and all this so in these people what they are saying is in ad mouth breathers are like example adenoid hypertrophy the palate is often arched yes you know this right of arched palate septum is deviated dns may be seen in the uh, cases of cleft lip and cleft palate etc and those even people with dental abnormalities so did you did, did this make any sense to you guys it is kind of related the septum is kind of deleted uh, related to palate the teeth etc so people who have adenoid hypertrophy they will have a high arched palate so they will have this kind of dns people who have cleft lip cleft palate they can have this dental abnormalities of people have okay here they are showing high arched palate so guys this is cleft lip cleft uh, this is cleft lip isn't it palate it's not seen here anyways So guys, we are done with developmental error. Did you understand the developmental error for deviated nasal septum? Main two things we have finished: trauma we finished, and we have also finished now uh, developmental error. What are the other two things? Caucasians and racial, and some people may have it in their family. That's it in the etiology. Now let us move on to types of DNA. So guys, now we are moving to what types of DNA? Okay, let's look at this, guys. Um, here they are talking about anterior dislocation, C-shaped deflection. s shaped deflection nasal spur impinging on turbinate so it is almost impinging on turbinate that is nasal spur thickening of the nasal septum i think this can happen in hematoma etc so let us look at what the explanation are for this so in types they have given um, it can be bony or cartilage it can or it can involve both so it can involve the bony septum or the cartilaginous septum or involve both okay So let's look at this anterior dislocations. Septal cartilage may be dislocated into one of the nasal chambers. This is better appreciated by looking at the base of the nose when patient's head is tilted backwards. So here is the anterior dislocation. Caudal border of septal cartilage projects into right nares. Caudal border of the septal cartilage. So this is cartilaginous. It projects into right nares. See guys, this is caudal. so we are only concerned with caudal and this is rostral so we are only thinking about caudal so caudal you can think like tail it's a posterior part of the body okay that is caudal now how does that make sense here caudal what was that caudal border of septal cartilage okay so the septal cartilage posterior border looks like projects into the right nares maybe okay Now let us look at C-shaped deformity, guys. C-shaped deformity, deviated nas nasal septum in simple curve to one side. Nasal chamber on the concave side of the nasal septum will be wider and may show compensatory hypertrophy of turbinates. Let's look at this. It doesn't look very difficult to understand. See, it is simple curve to one side. Yes, that we can see here. Simple curve to one side. Then let's look at this. It says. nasal chamber on the concave side so this is concave side this is the concave side this will be wider yes we can see so this will be obstructed isn't it the convex side is obstructed then concave side is wider and they may show compensatory hypertrophy of turbinates this one you can see the turbinates they have kind of shown it big big so this is a hypertrophy of turbinates on the concave side that is a compensatory action it's trying to do because of the a uh, wider chamber how is it going people we are looking at what now in deviated nasal septum we are looking at the types in types we have finished anterior now we have finished c shape what is next next is s shape deformity either in vertical or anterior posterior plane so it could be vertical or anteroposterior plane so that will be 
horizontal or transverse right such a deformity may cause bilateral nasal obstruction yeah neither here nor there it's trying to adjust both so here see you can see here the s shaped deflection so it is kind of obstructing both the chambers so s shaped deformity this can be either vertical or transverse so uh, the deformity may be co may cause bilateral this one will be the bilateral nasal obstruction that makes sense right the c shape will be the unilateral one and s shape will be the bilateral one spurs a spur is a shelf like projection often found often found at the junction of bone and cartilage okay okay so here they are saying spur is something that is formed at the junction of bone and cartilage okay what are they saying here it's a shelf like projection okay that's a shelf like projection found at the junction of bone and cartilaginous septum you can say a spur may press on the lateral wall and give rise to headache it is also predisposed to repeated epistaxis from the vessels stretched on its convex surface okay let's look at this a little more in detail in the image so here you have a nasal spur so wherever the bone and the cartilage meet let's just uh, assume like it is like this though it is not exactly like this between these two there is a one that is there is a shelf like projection they are saying this can uh, touch the lateral wall it can cause epistaxis that is bleed from the nose then what is this can cause headache for that person because uh, of all this it can cause headache on that person what else what else did they say that's it right guys we'll move to the last one thickening this may be due to organized hematoma or overriding of dislocated septal fragments so this one here the thickening of nasal septum guys this one you'll have to draw in the exam all these diagrams okay to get marks so what is happening here due to an organized hematoma so there was a hematoma here and that got organized or because of uh, there whenever there were septal fragments probably there was some trauma there are some fragments they also got what is the word they are saying dislocated septal fragments overriding of the dislocated septal fragments can lead to the thickening of the deviated uh, of the nasal septum causing a deviated nasal septum see a thickening is also called as a deviated nasal septum okay that's it guys we are done with types of dns let's move on to the next slide clinical features guys we are moving on to the clinical features here what are they saying here nasal obstruction is a clinical feature we already know it can cause unilateral or bilateral nasal obstruction right then headache yes we saw in the spur and all it can cause uh, headache then sinusitis let us see how it will cause this then epistaxis also we saw in the spur and all that it will cause epistaxis then what else and osmia so the person will not you know will not get smell so partial loss or total loss of sense of smell external deformities septal deformities may be associated right here they are talking about deformities of nasal tip, uh, tip or columnella they are talking about the dorsum of nose being affected. Now, middle ear infection, it can predispose to middle ear infection. Okay, because of the nasal obstruction looks like. Middle ear infection, remember. Guys, let us look at nasal obstruction in detail. So, it can be unilateral or bilateral, right? So, this you know. A high septal deviation causes nasal obstruction more than the lower one. So, if it is higher up the septal deviation, it causes more obstruction. Because the respiratory currents pass through the upper part of the nasal cavity. So, if it's high septal deviation, it causes nasal obstruction more than the lower ones. So, when you are uh, examining a case of nasal obstruction, you should check the site of obstruction. Uh, it could be vestibular, nasal valve, attic, a terminal or coanal. So, guys, these terminologies are really complex to understand. But anyways, let us try to understand this nasal valve at the place of nasal valve. Attic means somewhere up. So, definitely upper part of nasal septum due to high septal deviation. Yes, this kind of makes sense. Turbinal, they are saying hypertrophic turbinates. Coanal, coanal atresia or coanal polyp. Okay. So, guys, those terminologies are really difficult. Anyways, vestibular, attic, turbinal. Coanal, what was it here? Something I forgot, wait. Nasal valve, at the level of nasal valve. So, here they had telling sinicae usually post rhinoplasty. Let us look at this one. Post rhinoplasty, it can happen, they are saying, at the nasal valve. So, they have a cotyl trest here. So, it is used in nasal obstruction due to abnormality of the nasal valve so if it is because of nasal valve any abnormality they are using the scottle test so the cheek is drawn laterally while the patient breathes quietly you just draw the cheek laterally if the nasal airway improves that means the test is positive so if test is positive the nasal uh, uh, airway is improving so let us say it is positive 
positive means the nasal uh, airway improves so indicates that there is abnormality of the vestibular component of the nasal valve. Look at this guys we have external valve and internal valve. So here they are talking about the internal valve which they have shown here. So if there is some obstruction at internal valve if you pull the cheek out and the airway improves then you are confirming the obstruction or the abnormality of the vestibular component of the nasal valve. So guys what are we looking at? We are looking at the clinical features of deviated nasal septum. So deviated nasal septum clinical features first one we have seen it causes nasal obstruction. So nasal obstruction especially if it is higher up then it will cause more uh, uh, obstruction. And uh, what else we saw? Location. Based on location you can have uh, so many like you have to be careful about the location. It could be vestibular, it could be um, co-anal, it could be valve, it could be attic, it could be turbinate. Yes, all these it could be turbinal, right? Then move on, let's move on to the next clinical features. Headache. So these people can have headache. We already told you deviated septum. If it is a spur, it will press on the lateral wall giving rise to pressure headache. So you remember seeing the spur, right? Which will impinge on the lateral wall and it will uh, cause headache. Sinusitis, guys, deviated septum may obstruct sinus ostia resulting poor ventilation of the sinuses. So si when sinuses will not get ventilation. So there will be poor uh, ventilation of sinus. So that can lead to sinusitis, inflammation of the sinuses. So sinusitis, it can lead to, guys, then we will come to epistaxis. So epistaxis is what? Bleeding from the nose. It could be from the nose, nasal cavity, nasopharynx, etc. So basically, mucosa over the deviated part of the septum is exposed. And the drying effects of air currents leading to formation of crust. So because of that, when you remove the crust, there will be bleeding. So where is the little area? Here they are talking about the arterial supply of nasal septum. Here you have the little area. So because of the spur, what will happen? Because of the deviated septum, what will happen? There is dryness, right? And there is crust formation. And when there is crust formation and you pluck the crust from this area, there can be bleeding. Okay, that is epistaxis. So, mucosa over, over the deviated pass, part of the septum gets exposed due to the drying effects of air currents. So, there will be formation of crust. When you remove the crust, there will be bleeding. Okay. So, guys, these people can have anosmia, total or partial loss of sense of smell. Okay. As the inspired air fails to reach the olfactory region. So, you should understand why it is happening also, right? Because the inspired air is not reaching the olfactory region. So, it uh, there is partial or total loss of sense of smell. Coming to external deformity, guys, septal deformities may be associated with what deform deviation of what the deformation of the do dorsum of nose, tip of nose, columella, etc. Which is columella? So this is columella. This this part is columella. This is tip of nose. This is dorsum of nose. This is dorsum of nose. See, DNS predisposes to middle ear infection. So, you should know that it can predispose to middle ear infection. Guys, let's move on to treatment now. We already reached the treatment of uh, de uh, deviated nasal septum. Basically, guys, if it is a minor deviated nasal septum, you have really nothing to do. Okay, there's no treatment required. But only if it is producing some obstruction, you know, or if there is specific problems, then only you will have to give treatment and what is the treatment there are surgeries like submucous resection smr operation right and the other option is septoplasty which is much better for smr what are the indications deviated nasal septum causing uh, symptoms of nasal obstruction recurrent headaches if this there or if there is obstruction to the ventilation of paranasal sinuses to middle ear recurrent sinusitis otitis media if it is there so these are the things that you have to pay attention to if there is septal spur because of deviated nasal septum again right or if it is cosmetic purpose they need something so guys smr versus septoplasty we have separate video look at that okay here we are just telling you the indications basically you don't have to do uh, if it is deviated nasal septum you don't have to do anything okay only if it is a deviated nasal septum with a lot of other things like nasal obstruction recurrent headache otitis media recurrent sinusitis right then only you have to do the all these things Septoplasty indications also very similar. Deviated nasal septum, ab nasal obstruction, uh, cosmetic purpose, recurrent epistaxis because of spur, sinusitis, same thing they are talking about, right? Here are they talking about otitis media? Wait, let's see. Here they are talking about septal deviation causing sleep apnea or hypopnea syndrome. So they are talking about apnea here. 
if it is the septal deviation is causing sleep apnea guys so indications are very similar but what is smr you have seen they will raise the flap on both sides and they are removing a part uh, the septum uh, uh, whatever is in between the bone or cartilage they are removing and they are closing these flaps okay this is smr here you can see septoplasty guys septoplasty they are raising flap only on one side right and they are just are making some small cuts here and they are just shaping the bone or cartilage in between so septoplasty is done even in children so septoplasty has lesser complications you can reoperate on it etc so guys that's it about the treatment of dns you don't have to do anything or you can do septoplasty smr etc let's take a recap of what we have seen in this week so deviated nasal septum uh, or dns guys um, basically what is happening here the nasal septum is getting deviated and it is an important cause of nasal obstruction it can be unilateral or bilateral nasal obstruction why does this uh, deviated nasal septum happen because of trauma it can happen or it can happen because of uh, developmental error or it can happen because of racial factors in caucasians it's more and hereditary factors in in some family it runs so basically in uh, trauma they are talking about lateral blows to the septal ca septal cartilage will get uh, displaced blow from front can cause buckling twisting fracture so many things injuries can happen in childhood and people may have forgotten about it they may have overlooked the injury or in difficult labor while birth in the birth canal there could be a birth injury okay so that's all about trauma coming to development till error it can happen because uh, you know how this develops this uh, nasal septum descends to meet the two halves of the palate in the midline and uh, during uh, dentition the palate will descend right further to accommodate the teeth so if there is some problem in the palate then there can be a ne deviated nasal septum you see it in adenoids hypertrophy in cleft lip cleft palate in dental abnormalities these people can have deviated nasal septum caucasians can have hereditary factors if this deviated nasal septum may run in the family types of dns guys you know that there is anterior uh, dislocations then you have c shaped s shaped nasal spur and hematoma in anterior what have you seen in anterior basically um, it is uh, dislocated to one of the chambers in c shaped basically one of the chambers becomes roomy and uh, as a compensatory thing the hy hy turbinates may have undergone hypertrophy there could be s shaped deviation where bilateral obstruction can be there okay and uh, this uh, s shape can be vertical or anterior posterior plane coming to spur a spur basically is like a shelf like projection right often what have they written here often found at the junction of the bone and this is very important where is the spur at the junction of the bone and cartilage okay and this can give rise to headaches and it can cause epistaxis because of the spur thing there could be headache and epistaxis right so where will you see headache and uh, epistaxis because of it could be because of the spur okay then you have hematoma which can have got organized and cause thickening of the nasal septum or it can be because of overriding of the dislocated septal fragments so there is thickening of the septum so all these are the types of dns now let us move on to uh, the clinical features these people can have nasal obstruction especially if it is a high septal deviation that can cause more nasal obstruction because the respiratory currents guys they pass through the upper part of the nasal cavity focus guys focus then when you are examining a nasal obstruction person you should check the site of obstruction it could be vestibular nasal valve atic turbinal co coanal etc okay then cotel's test if it has at the nasal valve you can know the abnormality of the vestibular component of nasal valve uh, continuing with the clinical features these people can have headache sinusitis epistaxis okay all this uh, why it happens and all we have already discussed in the details then coming to anosmia also it can happen the inspired air may not reach the olfactory region these people can have external deformity like deformity of the dorsum of nose nasal tip columella etc these people can have middle ear infection treatment um, sometimes most of the times they don't need treatment if it's minor otherwise if it is associated the dns is associated with things like nasal obstruction epistaxis recurrent etc then there are two surgeries submucous resection operation and septoplasty septoplasty you can be you can be done in children etc here they'll raise flap only in one side and they'll try to retain the bony or cartilaginous septum as much as possible so in the indications we have seen guys uh, why do they do this only if these surgeries only if there is a deviated nasal septum which causes lot of other issues
they're talking for cosmetic reasons recurrent epistaxis sinusitis no nasal obstruction is main right nasal obstruction then uh, headache then what else sleep apnea all this if it causes then you can do uh, septoplasty or you can do smrs okay that's all guys in this video on deviated nasal septum bye bye